I left just a little bit in here and this is all regrowth. The uh, plant should continue to mature that much from the old plant. Stuck those into an air garden sprout to try to clone three offsprings from this mother plant. So what you see right now is the air garden sprout. This is a 10 watt LED light. I've got a deck on here that has places to put the clones. And so what I did was I took the uh, cuttings that I had in each of these sites there is a uh, white basket made out of plastic it has a uh, sponge that I sliced uh, down lengthwise kind of like a hot dog in a hot dog bun I just inserted the vine into that sponge dropped it in I was in hope that uh, this would root here you can see that uh, each of these uh, vines from the cuttings have started to root quite nicely. A little bit of uh, overgrowth into each other that I'll have to kind of separate out. But uh, what I'd like to do is take all three of these and put these into the uh, Black Magic Gropel that I was just cleaning out a little bit ago. This uh, zucchini plant seems to be at the end of its lifespan. I'm about ready to pull it out and replant this unit. So this is the grow pal from uh, Black Magic, and down in the bottom there's a pump that pumps up this tube. It does take a little bit larger sink to be able to wash the thing out. So I used a kitchenette sink. You could use a laundry sink. You could use an exterior uh, hydrant to spray it out. Uh, I've even taken uh, some of my uh, grow containers to a local car wash, coin operated, and used the high pressure jet with uh, the soap and the rinse to clean out. Now the bucket that I'm using is uh, about three and a half gallons and I'm going to end up putting in uh, more than one bucket. But the uh, nutrient that I'm using is uh, Dynagro and it's a 936 complete nutrient uh, it's liquid and it has complete micronutrients also i'm going to put in three teaspoons uh, per gallon that's going to be just over 18 teaspoons for a circulating system i've already got that poured out so let's go ahead and dump that into the first bucket of water there's usually a little bit of residue in the bottom of the measuring cup and so I usually just uh, dip it and pour, dip it and pour to help kind of rinse that cup out, get all the nutrient out, and then dry the uh, measuring cup out for the next use. So let's go ahead and get this poured into the unit. And you want to pour slowly because it does have a little bit of splash because of the grid that's on the top here. For these uh, clones that I'm doing right now, I'm going to put a neoprene cloning collar in the top around the stem. So here is the uh, grow bowl from that uh, Aero Garden sprout I showed a little bit earlier. And so let's go ahead and pull one of these out. As we bring this out, we'll try to get the roots out without tearing at them. Uh, you can see that it's got a nice, uh, healthy amount of roots on it. And uh, one of the nice things about uh, cloning for a little bit longer planning in advance is you get a much healthier clone start. So if I were to uh, try to extract this plant, sometimes you could bring these uh, plants up and out easily. Other times the uh, roots are too massive to come out. But if you get the right stage, they uh, extract rather nicely. So I'll set the uh, plastic air garden basket over to the side. And let's go ahead and pull out one of these two inch net cups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of coil those roots around and put those into the bottom of the basket. This is what I was talking about when I said a neoprene cloning collar. See, you know, it's a little thick and it has a split on the side, it has kind of a star pattern on the center that goes right around the stem. So let's go ahead and get that on there right now. So I put that around the stem and then I just start to squeeze that neoprene clone collar down into the net cup. It is a snug fit, but uh, it's 
made for the two inch neck cup. You can see that it stays right in there. So on the top side, that's what it looks like. And then on the bottom side, you've got the uh, roots that we've kind of coiled around along with that grow sponge and our water is gonna come up to about here. So let's go ahead and drop that back in. And that's all there is to that. So let's go ahead and repeat with the next two uh, cucumber clones that we've taken. This one's a little bit larger and may have been in the uh, cloning chamber for too long. Cucumbers by nature have these uh, tendrils and we don't need them for indoors for the most part unless you're growing up a trellis. So it's quite all right to uh, pinch those off. And matter of fact, I would suggest that because last thing I need is to have those uh, clinging onto other vines when I want to move those around are uh, actually clinging to a light stand. So pinch that one off the other side and let's go ahead and pull up uh, the smaller of the two. There we go, that's a beautiful clone. Just look at that. And it's leafed out quite a bit since the initial cutting. So let's see if we can extract this one as well. Oh, that's amazing, look at that. Comes right up. It's gonna be the same case. We're gonna take the uh, roots, we're gonna coil those around, make sure they get down into the uh, two inch neck cup. We'll take another cloning collar, put that around the base of the stem on this clone. And the same process, we're going to push that neoprene cloning collar. I, I get these off of uh, Amazon. Most of my products that I, I use come off of Amazon or a uh, subsidiary of Amazon called Woot, W-O-O-T.com. So uh, there we go, uh, more healthy roots and uh, looks beautiful, it's all ready. So we'll drop that in. And now we are ready for the last one and the largest one. This, uh, this one kind of concerns me a little bit that Perhaps the root structure might be a little larger than I'd like to have. Oh, those are beautiful. Look, look at the uh, nice white thick mass of roots off that clone. That's just gorgeous. This one may not come up out of that uh, nut cup easily. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's uh, tearing a little bit, so I'll try to work at it. Back and forth, unbelievable. Look at the roots. This one may have been in the uh, cloning chamber for just a little too long. And that's one of the dangers that you run into is that your uh, roots start to bush out and they do not wanna come out of that basket as well as you'd like them to. So I have tore off a little bit of the roots, but I'm not overly concerned because there's still quite a few roots on this particular uh, clone plant. And the same deal, we're going to uh, take all those roots as much as we can. Let's stuff those down into that uh, two inch neck cup. Let's find the last of the clone collars. We'll put that, uh, I notice that this is, this is unique. Um, see how the, the sponge that I use is starting to come off? Don't be overly concerned about that. You could actually just pinch that off, throw it away. You don't have to worry about uh, the mass of roots in the bottom because most of those were outside of that uh, grow sponge to start with. Here we go. We're going to uh, stick the uh, neoprene sponge down in there. And good gracious, that is a massive clone vine. It's got uh, blossoms on it, little baby cucumbers already. So we'll just kind of hang this one over the side, right down into that unit. I get some of the moisture off my hands here. I'm gonna get the uh, grow plates and start assembling the rest of this so it's all ready to go. This part is a uh, water level indicator. Well, looking much better so far. You could possibly see that uh, I've got about that much of that white uh, measuring rod that's uh, floated up right now. Little lever, I've already flipped back the opposite direction so it's gone from pumping water out to circulating water. It's nice they have that feature, just remember which way that's pointing. And there are four of these uh, interesting looking plates and they just uh, drop down right into each of the quadrants. Be careful not to uh, pinch your vines or plants or whatever else you happen to be growing. They have a um, little notch here. If you ever want to take those out, you just put your finger in there and pull up on those. It's got a nice clean look to it. 
The last spot that I don't have anything planted in, Blackmagic did provide these uh, covers. These little discs will drop right down in. Now the light that I'm using, if you're curious, is an LED quantum board light, and that's the light. This is an Osri uh, GL1000 LED grow light, very bright. I'm going to lower the unit, try to adjust the uh, power cord so that it hangs level. Because what I like to do is have about at least 12 inches of height between the top of the plants. And keep in mind that these vines are aggressive growers. You could even stand to go a little bit higher. So that's about 12 inches right there, right above the tops of the vines. One other suggestion would be the use of a level, especially with long light such as this. So I'm going to use the power cord to pull up on until that's level. And once that bubbles in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and Velcro the power cord to the side of the uh, light pole. That should be the only thing that we need other than always remember, once you get this put together, to go ahead and plug the unit back into electrical power so that uh, the pumps will run and they will irrigate the uh, bottoms of those neck cups and keep those roots healthy.